Good morning from Australia. My name is Richard Miller. I uh, you're at Never Not Here, and uh, you're welcome as always. And uh, sometimes in my life, I've cut my life loose from the past, sort of shifted out of what I used to do ten years for ten years or eight years, and then it kind of recreates. And uh, I've gone gone used to that. And uh, I kind of foresaw when I came to Australia, I'd really be cutting my life loose and not really knowing what happened day by day or week by week, you know. <laughs> and in a way, it's like a rebirth. Like, I don't know. I know I got cameras and that I like to talk. Those are the two things I know, right? But where I'll be and who I'll be talking with and uh, how it'll all unfold, uh, it comes to be a daily miracle, actually. And uh, it's very alive and very, it's very in the heart, you know, it's not a place where you go. It's just like the whole idea that mm, the plans and the agendas are not there. Uh, it just shows you what what is here, always, always, I guess. I mean, like, I'm not trying to force any kind of feelings or I'm not trying to aim my attention at anything in particular. And uh, the fact that I've kind of cut loose, don't have any more agenda than uh, making a few talks. Just, you know, my only agenda is connecting with people. And now here I'm talking with you, I'm connecting with you. And uh, so, you know, in one of our previous talks, we were saying that uh, just the other day, I was saying with somebody that uh, the speech is only the half, you know, but the listening is the other half and the intention on the listening. And I realized that all these years, I'm, I'm, it's not me that's speaking, it's you that's listening and evoking this. And for that, I mean, I'm very grateful. And uh, because you're showing me who I am. And uh, let's just uh, see who we have today. We're going to talk, speak with uh, Aruna Jiri from Melbourne. So hello, Aruna. Thanks and welcome. Hello, Richard. So, uh, we all know that uh, the world is accelerating. I mean, we can just feel changes happening faster and faster and kind of, in a way, we think, hey, that's too fast. <laughs> you know, where, where's the ground? You know, what is grounding? We can just say, what is grounding? You know, that's a really good uh, question right there. You know, we're, we're, some of us do a lot better, cut loose. You know, we can get in the flow. And uh, maybe we're Taurus or something like that, and we're already grounded. Or, I don't know, maybe a Taurus wouldn't like to be cut loose. And, uh, but we know, even by mating, you know, mate, our mates, like uh, sometimes I'm an airhead, you know, and I'm all over the place. I'm actually Scorpio, so I'm water. But uh, I've got a wife that's kind of rock solid, you know. <laughs> do this, do that, you know. <laughs> and, uh, God, I need it. Sometimes it feels like you need to be grounded, but let me ask you, what is grounding? What's the value of it? And, and uh, what are we talking about? Grounding to what? Ground, grounding. Uh, grounding into one's body would be the first thing, just being you know, just here and now with, with one's experience and having the energy further having an awareness of the energy flowing further, deeper in the body than just, because uh, if we do get very airy and in the head, um, if we sort of take a moment and just feel what, what the energy is um, doing, it's, there, there could be a, a sense of disconnection down through the lower part of the body. So, um, yeah, to, to me, to me, sort of grounding is is sort of being here and 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 sort of being connected into into being physical instead of uh, into more um, uh, abstract sort of realms, like or abstract, more. you could say. Sorry. Abstract. Yeah, abstract or um, it's. 
it, it's probably more just you know to, to, to ground us down and like function physically like moment to moment you know what's coming to me is like uh, abstract to me means mm -hmm. It's the human condition, basically, which is cool, you know, like we have this abstract yeah. capability, which means we can, uh, we, our attention can go on things that are not here. And so yeah. then it doesn't really go on things that are not here. It goes on images of things that are not here, you know, and those images like are our memory and our thoughts. And so then uh, we can get lost in our thoughts and then uh, we can, maybe it'll cause a fear because we're not, they shift pretty fast. They could shift just there's no limit how fast they can shift, really. We can go to the outer gal galactical, <laughs> and we can go anywhere, you know, in a thought. Like, uh, in speeds, it doesn't even have a speed to it, mm. right? And uh, it goes, it's beyond speed. So then we could say, well, where are we, you know? We don't, we don't really know where and who we are when we start getting really abstract. And then grounding has probably just a ling linguistic function, you know, like counter-linguistic and uh, if we're too much into our ideas and our interpretations then grounding brings us back of course you know getting hungry getting tired those are grounding things right yeah but yeah and to, and to be able to ground I think you know on this um, uh, journey that we're all on and we want to enjoy more and more of the fullness of it, grounding is sort of an important um, uh, way to be. Because as we ground, we drop down through the body and we sort of drop down through these lower lower centers that can um, contain some fairly sort of instinctual um, uh, sort of shadow sides of us. So we can, we can open up, say, from the heart very beautiful. You can open up in the intellect and sort of be very sort of uh, sharp and sort of clear. But then to allow that to to um, drop through the body. So a lot of times we're talking about grounding as an energy phenomena, like you know, okay, energy comes yeah. in the top and then it's got to go out the feet into the earth and stuff like that. But really, and I'm almost talking about about it as a mental phenomena that in other words you know because like we are totally grounded i guess we'd just be a beast <laughs> you know we wouldn't have any thoughts right and yeah. uh, we wouldn't have any way to get away from here we'd just be uh, a beast not in a bad way you know just mm. a, uh an, in, we'd be living in the animal kingdom and, yeah, uh, like, we, we, yeah you don't have to ground a dog or something maybe you do because dogs pick up uh, neurosis from people right yeah, cool. yeah. And the um, see where I'm going, kind of is like uh, our society is a construct of agreements, and the faster it changes, uh, people might get nervous because they feel like where's it going and what's happening, and so that is a place where we can try to ground our society, and, and not maybe just not have it changed so fast because in this late you know with uh it kind of looks like in several fronts europe and u.s anyhow north america it kind of looks like uh financial systems are like teetering <laughs> and we think holy cow <laughs> you know and then some people probably get pretty scared and others just say yeah bring it on you know it's got to collapse before it'll it'll get better but anyhow i think it won't be pretty the whole thing won't really be a pretty scenario and so then I'm wondering, sometimes I wonder about in this period of change, if we shouldn't, you know, kind of work for some kind of a stable transition and not just shrug our shoulders and let it rip. Well, even, even that, that, that we, that, that to, to me to say that, you know, helping people or wanting some sort of mass change is sort of stepping outside myself. And so, um, and what the the that the whole idea of unfolding that we can control how things unfold, and the human condition is we're always trying to control how our lives unfold, 
and it creates problems because we're operating from a limited perspective of our being. And if we just sort of allow and, and to be, we can respond from there. It doesn't mean that we don't take any action, but uh, we're connecting a lot more with, I suppose, the universal intelligence than just a, the individual intellect. And the world's going to be problematic. It's just, it's part of it. It's throughout history and it's problematic now. And that's part of the, um, the, the play that we can't find. Uh, we'll never find a utopia here. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it sounds very Christian, right? Without God's, without the kingdom of God on earth, you know, only he brings the kingdom yeah. on earth, you know, nobody, nothing man does makes any sense, you know. Uh, or that makes any progress toward the kingdom of God. I've been kind of studying uh, the Bible lately in it. And that's kind of the part I didn't want, you know, because I didn't want the kingdom of God. I, because I didn't want to have something uh, imposed upon me from someone else, you know, even God. I just wanted to uh, live by my own mistakes, let's say. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, I don't want to get into that dream that some, you know, something's going to, Somebody's mm. going to bequeath something to me, you know, yeah. or my, or other generations, because the, the Bible's promises are, are there for 2,000 years, but so yeah. far, nobody's got it, right? They say, well, maybe my kids will get it, right? And now we're saying, oh, now's the time of uh, revelation, right? <laughs> so that's, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, listen to this now. See how you like this, because um, I've just been getting this kind of thing, because we define it. Action is a commission. You committed a crime. And then I, I didn't commit the crime. So I'm, fr I'm innocent, right? Yeah. So then uh, that's kind of a basic def uh, definition of a uh, commission or an omission. I, you know, well, omission might not be the word, but, you know, innocence and guilt or uh, like uh, the cause was through your action. And, but I'm just realizing the cause was through my inaction, you know, because if uh, I didn't lock my door, for instance, and somebody was tempted to come in and steal something, uh, is that his fault or mine? You know, that, and so my, so I'm just saying, I'm just want to look at it, you know, put it on the table and say, is inaction or depriving my attention from some part of the world that's right here? but I ignore it and I go into my own, my own space. And so then from when I say that, and uh, when I meet what you told me that uh, we're always trying to control the world, we're actually are always controlling the world by looking away from it. And uh, we're letting it go wherever it goes, uh, not through a spiritual not through a spiritual uh, opening where we're in the vastness, but just through our res resignation as a normal citizen, how we think uh, those guys are doing this and the politicians never follow what we need and the corporate people have greed and, and it's just total resignation and we just have cut ourselves off from it because uh, it's painful and we don't know what to do with pain. Yeah, but there's not even a cutting off of it. We are part of that. And you know it's all it's all happening unfolding, and um, this idea that 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 we're sitting here together talking, and then there's a world out there, and that we're separate from it. Um, to even you know even if if we you know we could have all these great ideas and have all this talk about um, what to do next, and um, you know listen to the people etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But if we got office and tried to um, to execute some of these things like uh, put them forth we wouldn't you know probably I'd definitely do a worse job um, it's a uh, you know it's very um, sort of complex situation and I think there's always going to be a um, um, there's always going to be sort of a struggle while we're in this sort of you know we've got this bone and flesh and we're sort of uh, you know we're incarnated here we, there's this, there's this, there's this uh, Struggle. It's it's a it's a beautiful divine plan. All of it's just uh, un, unfolding and and um, 
and you respond as much as you can respond individually to to make the to um, you know improve things to to make more harmony. We we um, we don't we don't enjoy fear or contraction disharmony. That there's that there's something there that um, that sort of speaks to us, and we're wanting to open up into this sort of harmony and, and flow. And uh, obviously, if you do that on an individual sort of level, um, it just doesn't sort of stop there because it's, there can be like a, an opening, a, a flow, a, um, a, a deep sort of knowing of this sort of intrinsic perfection of the sort of the unfolding of of, of, of life all happening together like it's not like it's one it's one big happening right now this happening now next happening and there's, there's, there's no separation there but this sense of separation creates a particular way of energetically sort of vibrating and therefore thinking and um, all these sort of thoughts and beliefs and ideas we have are just part of the collective consciousness you know with its own particular um, uh, cultural sort of context, depending on you know Western culture, Asian culture, and uh, it's a hard it's a hard gig in a way that we sort of find ourselves in. Some things are hard, but I mean, like the part I'm curious about is, like you said, we do have a capacity to respond, and you, and you even said like you could respond with action or maybe no action. I think you yeah. said that at one time, and then, yeah. but let's say that you know, okay, to, tr to truly respond, say again. To truly respond, that there, there needs to be this um, openness and a connection to the oneness. Like there can be a true response with, without that. Like, but if it's coming from a sense of separation and um, fear, um, it's more of a reaction. Yeah. Right. So then, uh, distinction between response and react. I don't know. How do we go into that? In other words, you just say what. Sometimes it sounds like, you know, people will interpret that it means that we just wait. Wait until uh, uh, you're really sure, you know. And so then you can, ha you can spend a few years, like, saying, am I really well, sure yet or not, you know. Yeah. Well, that can be a characteristic, too. Some people are like that. Some people act really impulsively. I can do that at times. When my wife, she will uh, take an idea and really sit with it for, for weeks and really sort of... Uh, um, response. So there's that, there's that sort of characteristic, but yeah, yeah. To 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 know, to know that is um, uh, usually it comes back down to this grounding again. Um, you know, some decisions are just sort of um, come easier than others. It just sort of flows through, and there's just a, a you can really feel that rightness to it. But it's about to live your life always feeling that uh, a certain sort of rightness, but it's allowing that unfolding. So it comes back to your vulnerability, being, being vulnerable, um, and just the truth of what, what, what the truth is. So, you know, whatever we think, you know, people think, feel, act, Whatever, whatever is happening out there is all having an um, impact, no doubt, um, collectively, because there's no, you know, there's, there's a there's a unity to us all as humanity and to the planet, and um, we're getting together here and saying some stuff that, uh, right. chucking some concepts around, and hopefully, what's deeper than that concept is um, energy. So, for me, it's always that that um, you know that the base is really that that sort of first movement of that of, of energy and then the and the words and the actions flow from that but we all carry that you know we're you know there's a humanness to us all too let's say there's a connection you know and we can feel it you know it's not a big uh, theoretical thing because you know in those places where we kind of like it uh you know little babies and little puppy dogs and kittens and uh beautiful flowers and and beauty and uh, the majesty of the Australian forest, primeval, whatever, and uh, so many different things. And then 
you know, some other things we can't help responding to either. If we see some real horrific things on television and stuff, we, or we go to a movie and it, there's always violence in a movie. And so then we feel it, right? So then we know that we feel it, right? But then when it seems to be too much for whatever reason, and we have this special thing we call numbness, right? <laughs> and it really, yes. really is important in society. It's like somehow keeps the whole thing stable. You know, uh, I'm not saying it's necessary for every human being, but I'm just saying that somehow when you don't know what to do with energy and with uh, empathy, there's too much empathy going on. And so then you make an interpretation like they deserve it. Or, you know, yeah. they're doing it to themselves, so what can I do? Or you could say, I just live in my own little, they're not really here now, so they're just thoughts. And so then why should I uh, concern, if they were in front of me, I would really speak with them and offer what I could. But since they're, uh, since our, our armies and navies and our border patrol has kept them far away from me, uh, I'll just pretend like they're only thoughts. And uh, so then anyhow, numbness is what I'm talking about. So then uh, I'm saying like, yeah, we are all connected. Every vibration gets through us, but we don't let it in very much, you know. So we're living in this illusion that that it is not even there, you know. The suffering and you know, create the world. These are just twisted forms of um, energy that has a lack of, of clarity and awareness in there of consciousness. And as we penetrate into these twisted forms so that the, to me, the, the real, the, the goal are, are, are these arising, so if suffering, sense of suffering, contraction, limitation arises, uh, the, the general human response is to pull away from it, but it's like, hey, here's an amazing opportunity, there's some distorted pattern here, and if, and if we just relax into that distorted pattern without a, um, using some kind of technique or um, strategy to try and relieve it because we don't like it but just to totally rest with it with you know the patience of eternity there is an unraveling of that that energy and instead of it being distorted it, it understores becomes pure well, let's kind of look into some of these uh you know like there's a connotations there's connotations of every word right and so if you say twisted energy and distorted patterns already you there's that's really loaded with judgment right and uh so then also i want to go back i don't want to miss this part because i want to go back a little bit because to something you said was uh if you're oh, feeling that's numbness that's if you're feeling that's numbness that's there's suffering and so then i'm saying we're not even feeling most of it we don't feel it's just fundamental to society right and then uh well, it's locked in there somehow. There's, there's, there's patterns that are preventing us from feeling it because the, the numbness would just be a, um, it's, just a, it's a strategy to lock away deeper, darker shadows within. And it can't always work. It, it ends up coming out, obviously. It, it bubbles out in different ways. You know, I, numbness, I, was saying, I was saying the numbness was uh, due to the uh, abstractions because the abstractions can get kind of horrific and so then the but now I want to say that the numbness is the abstractions you know because every time we have an abstraction what, what is an abstraction it means like our our attention goes on to a, a concept and an interpretation yeah so in that way what it's doing our attention is leaving what the here and now and going to a thought yeah. about the here and now yeah so that's already a numbness isn't it yeah well it's wanting to know isn't it that's that's yeah yeah sure it's a numbness and it's a wanting to always know, it's it's wanting to to know more and more it's 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 it's, it's knowledge if I can just know how this works or know how to solve this or yeah but why it's really why do we want to know what is this wanting to know yeah we've always we've always wanted to know and then when it comes to no we haven't always wanted to know mystery so so you know obviously you were probably had most people that you've interviewed would probably come back and say it's about not knowing it's a it's a it's a place of being able to rest in in not knowing stopping putting in that that um information because the the, the the knowing creates an energy in the head which which um hides what's deeper yeah no, I'm just trying to get real fundamental here and not say too many things that are already preconceived, you know, because like if you say twisted 
patterns, twisted energy, or I, I, or I don't know what's preconceived out there. I suppose every word, because any word that I have isn't my word. I got this language got downloaded into me. I've got no, you know, I've got to use some kind of word. So um, sure. So depending on where you the, where you come from, and different words have different. Um, Loading and, and to me, you know, I try and stay away from saying anything of using the word God, stay right away from that word. It's just a backward spelling of dog. That's how I see it when it comes up. And love's the other one. That's a, that's a, uh, a, a uh, pretty messy one talking about love. Not real fond of bliss either. But it's great the um, the negative ones, you know, anger, hate, jealousy, shame, guilt. You know, they're all pretty. Um, you know, they all got pretty much. A, you know, they're quite. You know, it's talking about grounding at the start. There's a groundedness to them if you really just feel into the energy that those words have. Something about coming to a new continent for me is mm. like a, it's like a reboot. And I'm willing to, in some sense to kind of relook at everything I've ever said and then just say, like, if I could just rebuild it from the ground up, you know, <laughs> and these guys over here, somehow I'm such a, a different duck, you know, I'm a weird fish and they want it, they're looking at me and they're kind of like playing the game saying, let this, let's just tell this guy what life is all about one step at a time. And it's kind of coming to some great discoveries every day. And uh, mm. I, I, I think there's a great opportunity in that, you know, I mean, cause we, you know, like uh, to really look at distinctions like uh, that are useful, like the difference between responding and reacting and how mm. can we respond and, and, uh, and well, you know, we don't say have to say how can we respond. We should say how can we notice a difference, you know, and then uh, and then just sit with that and see what comes up. Right. I mean, because for me, responding means like I can do that. Uh, I'd be somewhere and I can say, oh yeah, I can do that, you know. Uh, like certainly discussions and uh, and uh, being able to put a film on the internet. If it seems like that there's a possibility of that, that's second nature to me. I can do that without even very much focusing on it. So I can really be here now in a way and just have this thing unfold by itself. So then if there's an opportunity for that, now I'm uh, not working and I'm an older guy. So then I have a limited income. So then if somebody asks me for money and they want me to take my wallet out and pick through the small bills, I <laughs> I have a harder time with that, you know, like I can't do that <laughs> yet, you know, or I can do it once in a while, but somehow I'm not really ready and willing to do that. But, uh, you know, I've got my own limitations, I guess, or, you know, like oh. where I can respond and where I can react. Yeah, def definitely. And, uh, in the, in, in one, in, 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 yeah, in, in one sense, everything's just happening. It's just, it's unfolding your whole odyssey. Cause to me, I, I don't know much about you or your background at all. Um, I went on your in website trying to find a little bit about your um, background. I couldn't find who's this Richard Miller guy. He kept it pretty um, abstract. <laughs> oh, it's a nice hardcore grounded sort of um, details. Um, I don't even know what you've previously worked that you're into, but um, at, but you're being, you know, you're totally being moved by life. You know, it's um, it's beautiful to see, and you're doing doing what you're doing, and it's great. And you just, in a way, you you get up in the morning, and you, I think you said when we spoke um, earlier, when we just touched base when you arrived in Australia, that you get up and there's all this energy there, and uh, let's go, you know. 
and it's great having you sort of um, yeah come over and come through the um, through the uh, uh, groups of people here that are sort of got interests in this matter and uh, uh, it's one thing I love about the American culture is this uh, enthusiasm, this bubbling enthusiasm and yeah, let's sort of go and, and this positivity. Um, so I've been to America a few times, but uh, yeah. And this capacity to respond and to um, react is, is amazing. And, um, you know, we've got Jesus' birthday in um, anniversary in a few days that we celebrate. And to me, the life of Jesus is... Um, I was brought up an atheist, basically, with a very strong conditioning from my father, and I've never read the Bible. Um, I can't sort of go actually anywhere near it, but from what I've heard and how I feel in my heart, um, symbolic, symbolically what Jesus' life really um, represents is this coming into the truth, and, um, but then really living it, that um, just because there's an awakening and a realising of um, something so much deeper and more profound that um, that's not the end. It, it's it's an awakening. It's just not like it's awakened, get your Dharma stamp of approval uh, certificate and hang it on the wall and um, set up shop or whatever. He really, you know, uh, lived it and he had to live it right to the end, the whole um, story of the crucifixion that, um, he was teaching a life of, uh, of you know, love and compassion and forgiveness. And it's seemingly in some of the, the texts that are really deep sort of um, truth about just being, about the, about the moment. And he got captured and all these sort of basic human rights that we're still fighting for today in various parts of the planet, you know, just like pulled away from you and it was like, you know, you've been found um, guilty and uh, we're going to, um, you know, crucify you. So he sort of got, you know, in a way sort of um, murdered and, and um, killed. And for him, the capacity for him to, to, to stay present, to um, respond, um, to not to contract, to open, is um, just amazingly profound. And uh, just that... To me, that's uh, that that story. That there's this freshness of, of life, just moment to moment. Here we are, and it's just um, yeah, just opening, just opening, opening, opening into 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 now. And and life is uncertain. What's going on is, I don't know. I'm self-employed, and uh, you know everything's very um, too much. Um, you know, in, in a in a state of just flux and flow, and anything could sort of uh, happen. And, on all, all levels, and it does happen you because of media coverage. You see, you know, you have 10,000 people in a, in a village in Japan, and the next morning, bang. Um, who knows what's going to happen the next moment, how life's going to unfold. But, but it's just a modified continuum of the past. It's always been like that. And, you know, it's just atomic bomb being dropped, and, um, you know, previous, you know, all throughout history, there's this, this vulnerability in, in living, in and uh, and you know, contracting to fear or have this courage to open up through fear, and uh, and to, to sort of live live truth and the rightness about that, and and just to have people out there, you know, there's people out there sort of uh, posting these messages around. And um, it's, it's great to, to see that because, you know, people have things that stir in them and they come across the right book or the right YouTube or the right person down the street that takes them somewhere and they hear some words and it just confirms what's, what's um, being born in there. It's, it's, it's coming through. And it seems like it's just the nature of the planet that we're not going to have this mass ascension that we all have this process that we're all sort of going through and, uh, and you know, I can really relate through my life to some of the places I found myself in, you know, fairly sort of dark and there was a lot of uh, denial about that. And um, through some grace, um, I feel just so grateful that um, something sort of has, has come through. But, uh, yeah, it's... Um, it's always interesting times, always, right down to, yeah.
never going to happen. Sometimes land. I think you even said it. I think you even said it, you know. Sometimes we say uh, it's all just happening. Yeah, it's just right. happening. It's all just yeah. happening. So then what can we do, actually? I mean, do we have the power to, uh, we can talk about choice and all that stuff, but do we have the power to focus our attention or to kind of look at different things or to, to make a decision what we're going to put our attention on? And maybe it won't work 100%, but could, do we have any power on that? On an absolute level, no. Because if you break it down and feel exactly what's happening and even the latest research in the brain, how when a thought comes up, it's already fired in the neurons and then it sort of comes onto the screen. Uh, you know, and, and thoughts, you know, emotions and thoughts are totally sort of linked. So emotions sort of arises, sort of triggered from the past of feeling guilty or uh, shameful about something that this sort of deep sort of sense of shame, maybe it's already sort of triggered off and then to sort of get hard on yourself about that already. And we've been conditioned, we arrive here and to survive as a species on this planet, we need some sort of form of um, conditioning. And so on an absolute level, it's just, it's just an unfolding. If the, the time comes through, the time comes through and you, and life guides you in, into to hearing. But I suppose people listening to this and uh, people that are sort of interested into this, um, one choice, You know, whatever you hear, it's how you sort of respond and what, what takes in. So, in, in, finally, it's grace. But if I sort of take that, that step and say, okay, what, what choice is there? Um, I, I suppose the two words that really cut, you know, ultimately, no, there's, 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 there's no choice. But there's seemingly there is a choice, the choices that we have. So... Okay, okay, let me ask this, you know, because you said in an absolute sense, there's really, it's a just unfolding, right? And then, of course, like, and then there's our experience, whoever we are, you know, because you might be having an absolute experience right now, and I might not be, like, for instance. Yeah. And probably most of the people that are listening are not having an absolute so, experience. So, Otherwise, well, they wouldn't be listening, right? Yeah. So, so what I can come down to is a personal experience of mine. It was a real turning point. I felt like I was going down the wrong path. And at some point there, I started to get some concepts about everything changes moment to moment. And there was a point that I felt that I had some choice in how I was going to unfold and the choices I was going to make if I made choices that were leading me this way to, to, um, to come to a point to make choices leading another way. And um, that was a real... Quite, quite, quite a um, nice insight to have because my life changed from, from that point. It kind of made me more conscious of, of what I was doing instead of just being in this this um, unconscious sort of pattern of of reaction. And um, I suppose you know, and there would have been a numbness around that. And some somehow through some grace, there came to this point where it came up that I felt that there was there was this choice. So. I could choose things that um, helped with that unfolding. And by it was like a prayer in a way, not that I, you know, that word can be really loaded too, but prayer, but um, it was like this prayer, I can, I can make a, a, cho a choice here, which, which way to sort of go. And so, so through grace, I, um, you know, the, it was able to be guided. But it's about coming back to, to, to now, just seeing that, that, we're always now. We're even when we're thinking and abstracting, we're thinking about the future or the past. And the future is, you know, it's gone. Uh, the past is gone. The future is non-existent. So it's just a mental concept happening in the now. So it's about seeing the, the real power of now. I think someone's written a book about that and titled it. Um, people tell me, power of now. <laughs> so it's about just being here. It's about you know. hearing, hearing, okay, you've got to just be here. So... When you just start to be here, you have this in a way, in a way, the in a way, the past is gone. But in another way, the energetics of the past is here now. Yeah, and then a that's kind of uh, operating us like a puppet or a machine. And yes. uh, so then that is here somehow. You know, here's what happened to my attention, just to share how my process went. Yeah. In a way, yeah. I realized uh, how how to produce anxiety, right? 
-hmm. I realized that stories produce anxiety and, yes. uh, you know, and belief structures, and they're not always conscious. I don't even know if there's a conscious and unconscious, but I just make it simple. Like the world is vast and we're only noticing a small part of it. So what we're not noticing, let's just call it unconscious or subconscious or something. And so I'm not trying to say it's a special place or many levels or all that kind of stuff, you know. And then I just kind of, uh, I got, I developed a distinction to see what was reaction based, which was usually ang anxious in some way. And I used to live my life totally like that and, and celebrate it and think it was the best thing, you know, that uh, it was like muscle tone. I was always ready. I was totally anxious and wired, you know, and boing. I was this elastic thing that was ready to pop. <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, that's great. And, uh. And so then I, I just, as an experiment, well, maybe as an experiment, I just started to notice that more and more. And I'm not saying that I don't have any buried trauma and all that stuff, and then you could coax it up, and I would have energetics that would move through my body that would kind of release. And I know that I'm tight here and there, and there's a lot of things that don't <laughs> flow, you know. But somehow, basically, uh, yeah. I don't really, I don't truck around with, with anxiety very much. And so yes. then I'm available for a lot of things, and yeah. I'm I don't say no very much right at least I'm kind of set myself up in this period where no doesn't have to be very important and so then without even saying yes like I don't have to force myself to say yes but there's no no there see so then just it kind of flows like a river and so then from that uh, it's just like you said I wake up in the morning and there's a lot of energy and so then that energy I would never think of responding without energy right because it's there you know and it just gets used right it's just in action already and so if I'm not doing a talk or working on a on a movie or doing editing I'm washing the dishes or thinking about picking up around the kitchen or what I maybe I should wash this floor or you know what so then I mean that's just what happened to me like I don't really mess around with anxiety too much and, and I'm sure so it's the in point, there huh? the question I have for you is at that point where you got curious and it was like an experiment or you looked at anxiety and didn't keep trucking along with it. And um, what's that point? What's that, you know, <laughs> it's the mystery of that, that point of that, that, that turning. That's a good one. You know, I don't know, you know, in one sense you could just say, <laughs> Say that was too old. The old thing. Uh, I've done it too long. Oh, you know? We've got to know, Richard. We've got to know because we've got to tell people out there. <laughs> you did it. We've got to tell them how to do it. That, that point. Well, in a one in a one way, you know, it must just be a happening, like you said, like it's unfolding and it just happened, you know. In another way, I mean, I've said ex interpretations on it and excuses. My interpretations are that after 60 years of doing it the other way, I thought, oh boy, is that all there is? <laughs> and let me try it another way and. I'll get anxious later, you know, when I need it. You're and, on this camel ride. You're this fish on the camel ride. Right. I'm feeling so damn thirsty. <laughs> right. Mm. So then I'm, and if I do, uh, sometimes I fall into preaching, you know, because I'm kind of like a jerk, you know, and thinking that I can give advice or something like that. And so then my preaching is engage, you know, be engaged because I've got so much from being engaged. And so little from being disengaged, you know, and I don't know, I can't really generalize and saying there's no value in just sitting in your own energy. And so I don't know what that is, but I can somehow see it, you know, and I can feel it and uh, in the other, I can, it reflects in me and I don't have to turn my head from that reflection because it, mm. it, I don't feel a hurt by it, you know, but I feel like I have to kind of poke my finger in it and tickle it, you know, and say, hey, <laughs> The, the world's out here to be lived, you know, and God, is it fun? And that's about, you know, I might be BSing, you know, and just trying to convince myself to do it some more. I, I can't really know. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, it's just, in, in, you know, in, in life, back to embracing what is, you know, you've, um, there's a lot of fun happening for you, really enjoying the, the, the journey and but then it's always embracing what, what comes through because, um, you know, and back to, you don't know how, how um, you know, what, what lies around the next corner. And it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's just in embracing all of it. And I, I do um, <clears throat> some retreats and uh, I offer some, but people come along that have never really 
you know, they've just got this idea about turning inward in a way. So they've never, you know, they've heard of this meditation and, and they feel at a point where the, the mind's just too busy, there's too much stress, they've got to do something about it. It's just crazy what's happening internally. And so I offer a few different sort of techniques, but one thing that I basically say is that it doesn't matter what technique or what approach or, or whether you look at saying, okay, there's no approach, let's just, but then you've got to usually go and listen to someone that, that preaches that there's no approach, no technique. Um, it's just about sitting down on a cushion under a tree, um, in your bedroom, uh, however you end up doing that, just sitting with yourself, whether you, you leave the culture you're brought up in and go to another culture, um, however, however it unfolds, it's this, this point of just, of just sitting down and just sort of, sort of stopping and, and, and having, having a, a look, like tur turning, turning inwards and, um, uh, it seems like that's you know that that you know through grace that was a process that unfolded for you. You um, wired up. Did you drink coffee in the morning? Go up and have your, your breakfast on the go. I so, did drink coffee this morning. Yeah, you know, I did drink cool. coffee this morning, but I didn't have any breakfast. So then okay. I'm kind of like wired, I suppose. But uh, you know, I've sat I've sat for a while too. You know, some years, but I never felt really. You know, it just kind of showed me the inaneness of uh, mind. It didn't really show me any peace or anything. Oh, like yeah, that, that previous to, to this sort of turnaround, you would sit. You're yeah. saying you sat, for, you sat for some time before you had this sort of um, where it sort of just sort of turned around for you. You really turned that. Not corner. really, not really. I mean, I don't know what. I mean, I, I sat for a while as an experiment because I was with. Somebody that said, "Hey, sit for a while," and so I and said, "Okay, I'll happened. do it." Huh? And not much happened. You thought? Pardon? You didn't think much happened through that? Well, some, uh, you know, it. You can't see, you know, much did happen through everything, right? But when, yeah, you, I, yeah. one of the things I realized is there's really no benchmarks in life. You That's know? right. It's like this great beach, you know. Yeah. And it's all sand, you know. And then sometimes the water's here, and sometimes it's not, and you don't even know why or where or what. I mean, yeah. if you could somehow pound a post into the ground and say, oh, I've been by this place before, you know, and maybe meditation is that post which that you pound in the ground. And then it's kind of like a benchmark to say, oh, yeah. And then you can realize that my thoughts just go around and around and around, never go, never go anywhere. They're useless. And all the time before, I used to just define them as vital. You know, that was how yeah. I operate everything with all those thoughts, you know, and I would need to be ready for all these uh, you know, unknown, so I'd circulate them through my mind, you know, I had to be ready for anxiety, so I'd stay anxious as much as possible. I mean, I had all kinds of excuses, but I mean, I don't know, really, I don't really sit now, and uh, no. and I don't know, I don't say I graduated it from it or anything like that, but what I like to do well, is just like... What's uh, the difference, to me, what's the difference between sitting and, and having a dialogue like this? I don't know. Yes. I like this better, you know, and uh, and uh, I don't know. I because I want your input. I don't want to just be warbling around in my own cage, right? Somehow, just by you receiving me seems to be more important than just me receiving myself. What can you say about that? Well, it's just um, happening. <laughs> yeah. See, because like. Uh, I'm not even so sure of all so many things that we say if you really go under it, because like nah. we could say like a perennial ph philosophical question is what's really here the me or the other self and the other are like the two choices, but really I'm not so sure because we talk about Joseph Campbell, we talk about the mythology or like the uh, the collective consciousness, we talk about how humanity believes the world works and the continuity of time time is just a is is ho the whole fabric of time is a thread of concepts that can extend beyond this moment and uh mm -hmm. and all those concepts uh somehow is what we're seeing even before the self and the other and uh so then that's when if you've got to sit there and say well i don't have the the answer is that true or not but somehow just by posing that question uh all those concepts are in doubt, you know, 
what's here is endowed. And then we just kind of do go to the unknowing or like there's a little bit, there's a little inch of unknowing in everything. There's a little room for things to bang around and saying, this is not just tied into reality, but this is just something that we've laid on here. It seems to, and we're getting verified often. And so then that little bit of unknowing really takes the seriousness out of all, all my threats. You know, all the threats to me are a part and parcel of that, uh, of that mythology, let's call it. And uh, yeah. so then uh, I'm more willing to just be less anxious and, and, and sit more in the, in the flow of energy and then being more in, into activity. And in, uh, even if that activity is wrong and, and makes mistakes and hurts people when I really intend it to, to help people, you know, and I'm not really a preacher, but I, I put things on the table. I like to put them up, you know, that we've never said this. I want to say it. And then there it is, like everybody check it out for yourself, you know, does that have any validity or what? And uh, I'm questioning just about everything, especially our spiritual teachings, you know, that say that uh, there's nothing here and I'm nobody and there's nothing to do. And I'm, I'm kind of sure in my own self that uh, doing nothing is like a doing, you know. We, we approach it from a doing and not from a, a really uh, an availability. Because here we are, we're a unit that has some kind of awareness. And that, what is that? The basis of that awareness is availability. And we deny our availability in so many, 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 many places. And that is a doing, you know, that's a thought. That's a, that, you know, that's a abstraction, you know, that we're not here somehow. We're not here for that. We're not here for this. We're not here for the other. And, uh, and so then I don't trust any of those spiritual teachings, really. Uh, the more I hear them, <laughs> the less I trust them, really. So I don't mean to be uh, not trusting you or if you're giving any spiritual teachings, but anyhow. Oh, no, no, I could. No, I'm, you know. Yeah, I don't trust them. It's good. I want to what? open the field. I want to sweep it clean, right, and say let's reconstruct, you know. Because basically if you look at humanity and how it operates, we're at a game board, right? And we've got certain rules, which are the institutions, like the yeah. way the financial system works, the way the... Uh, monetary system works, the way the, the country system works, and the governments of diff separate countries, and the way that, uh, what else works? The way the resources work, the way we work with the earth, you know, because most of us believe in it's kind of an ownership instead of a stewardship. So an ownership yeah. means we have rights, and so those rights are extraction. We extract from the land instead of, uh, we were talked the other day, you know, uh, just I'll share that on this talk too, that we said this guy, Bill McDonald, he's kind of like an advanced thinker about, uh, about well about society but he says he just says uh an amazing thing he says i want to love all the children mm -hmm. of all the species for all time mm. so this is like sustainability it's way more than sustainability because it means like there's no degradation of the environment i want to love all the children children means future i guess all the species for for all time means there's no degradation of anything. So then everything needs to be redesigned, but not just physical things in our, in our uh, accoutrements of the world, but our, our attitudes have to be redesigned. And, uh, and our mythology has to be redesigned. And uh, it's like, uh, it's just a wonderful thought. I mean, to say that is, is enough to just send shivers through you. Yeah. And so that's a doing. You know, that's a doing. I mean, you can't just say it's all being done by God or source and it's all going to happen when, uh, you know, that's the well, question. Well, you can, you can then look at, you know, if you want to sort of really examine where those ideas themselves come from. Like with a seed of those ideas. They come from nowhere. Hmm. They come from spaciousness, and you know they're a total gift. Yeah. So I don't know what you how you define God then. That's the. But when they're sad, when they're spoken, you can say yes. I get behind that. I'm for that. I'm definitely. Uh, I want to get on board of that train. I want to be part of that. Yeah. That's no, great. Great.
I don't know. Am I too controversial? No, no, no. There's a um, there's another Hafiz poem, which hopefully I can remember this. If I don't, if I can't, if it slips my mind, um, sort of great religions. Um, the, the 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 big ships are the great are the great religions. The lifeboats, the poets. Any same person that I know has jumped overboard long ago. That ain't good for business, is it, Hafiz? So here's someone writing a poem back in the you know 1300s, and uh, you know in a way you know very sort of um, controversial, you know. Just let's jump, give everyone jump, jump overboard. You know you got everything that you're you're saying too. Jumping overboard from that. You can go and look at all the, all the other teachings that are coming up, but then what you're what you're coming through with it's then being able to jump overboard with that. Yeah, let's give everyone a second shot on that and say that one more time because that was so beautiful. What, what what is it? Say that poem again. Um, great religions. It's um, the 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 large ships are the great religions. The lifeboats, the poets. Any sane person I've known has jumped overboard long ago. This ain't good for business, is it, with this? So in a way, it's about destroying, yeah, all, all sort of, um, you know, any, any, anything that's sort of said, because anything that you're going to come up with is that, you know, you can um, uh, be controversial about all the spiritual teachings or whatever and, and um, burn them out of your system. But in doing so, that what you're proposing, burning that also out of your system. Right. Because it'd just be replacing one with another. So what's wrong with that? Well, it happens. Yeah. You mean? Are you mean that uh, there's a? You know, you in a way, people will understand that to to think that there is a state where with has no system in it. Right, and then somehow they'd even say, when well, you say it's just replacing one system with another, it kind of it has a connotation. I'm, I'm well, asking you, I'll ask you. It has a connotation that uh, it would be better to have none. Well, you can't. That's the thing. We've got to have systems. We've got to have systems of living and and cultural systems and. Well, let's and, just be uh, real clear it, about it, that. Let's happen. be clear. You can't. You can't have what? You can't have no system. You can't have no systems, yeah. It's got, there has to be systems. Yeah. So then what's well, wrong with replacing one system with another? We used to have a system where we kept slaves. Well, now we got a system where we, where we imprison people. China. But, you know, it's a little bit better maybe. <laughs> well, they did that in China. They went through and they had a revolution and they had communism. And they're not into religion at all. I think all religion is just the, the uh, scourge of mankind. And... Uh, but in a way, communism is just a, you know, another religion. Uh, or the outgrowth of the religious thinking of mankind. So it's all, you know, it's just another, another system, and you know, it's all, it's all, it's all part of that. That you know, the, the being incarnate and and sort of be, being here, that there, there's not going to be this utopia. There's not going to be this um, perfection. And it's just having to just embrace what comes along. And uh, we can have, you know, you can quote before about this beautiful picture of how we could jump on this boat or on, on this and, and create a, a, um, a world that's a lot more environmentally friendly and sustainable, and that'd be fantastic. But uh, it's great to get excited about that. And, and, to, and, and there's a lot of people around doing a lot of practical things right from the grassroots where it's sort of important, but who knows what's going to unfold? Because there's a lot of forces. It's like us talking about the past. We're saying the past is gone. There's only now. But what's happening in the now through the mind is a modified continuum of that past, and it has a momentum. You just can't stop it like that. It, it flows through. Okay, so, here's one for you. Here's one for you. Let me tell a little story. Yeah, uh, good. <laughs> Uh, a certain reporter uh, was on the world beat, and he's always gone to the stress zones. You know. And uh, 
his story is in 1989, he was in Leipzig, and uh, there was a demonstration against the Berlin Wall, and he was in a back room with the organizers of the demonstration. And he asked them, well, what's really the bottom line? What's going on here, you know, and what do, where do we stand? And they were telling them, okay, we believe that we're getting so good with these demonstrations and we've raised such a public eye or outcry that probably within a year we'll have a, We'll have passes where everybody can go back and forth at will. And yeah. three hours later, the Berlin Wall fell. Yeah. So it didn't take a year. Nobody knew what was going to happen. No. And it just uh, collapsed immediately. It just collapsed right there. And yeah. uh, when he told that story, I thought that's, a, that's an amazing story that I've told many times because I was living in Europe when that fell. And I was totally surprised right and yeah. uh at the same time i was there in italy for 10 years and, and it was these huge forces pulling the common market together you know when i was there in every country there was you the trucks would be lined up for hours just to get across the border and declare their their cargo and stuff like that you know there was so much friction in europe and at the same time, or a couple of years later, Yugoslavia was in total war and they were just slaughtering each other, just masses, you know, just trenches, just big trenches full of dead bodies and just amazing stuff going on that you can't really put it in. It won't fit in, you know, the coming together and the blowing apart happening yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and that will continue to sort of unfold that way. Yeah. I'm not for that whatsoever, you know. I would never say that anymore. Zero, you know. I would never say that, you know. Yeah, you can do it, but I don't I'm getting it. I know. And so when I get these 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 kind of thoughts, you know, I always kind of like put them up and say, "Well, why? What what's the point of saying it's just going to because if you just shrug your shoulders and turn away, of course it's going to crash." You know, you're making this, you know, that's making you the can't, space. You can't even do that. Huh? You, you're, you're being, it's, people are going to make all endeavor to save themselves through because of their fear of their existence. So humanity has got an amazing, why we've survived this long is because of our ability to sort of work together in a way. And we'll sort of continue to try and work together. And, and people, whether they decide to do nothing or to do as much as they can or to do half or whatever they do, it's just going to be that, that happening. It's just going to, it's what's going to um, unfold. And, you know, there can be shifts in, in consciousness. You know, we can all um, sit in the um, Western world because all of our needs are nicely sort of taken care of pretty much at this moment. And But there's a lot of full-on stuff that's being um that's happening in other parts of the world that are just the the most darkest sort of humanity can go to that are sort of unfolding and they'll have you know those you just can't flick a light switch and and solve that they they have to sort of evolve out of that and um what's the dark what's the darkness that's happening here what darkness is happening right here in australia well, well, okay, let's start there. Between you and me. Yeah. In Australia. What well, it's, a, it's all around us. It's in Australia. Yeah, sure. What's here? In Australia? On what level do you want me to answer, answer that? Pardon? Like, like on a practical level? Well, I mean, I think that the uh, Aborigines are totally trounced on, you know, and you can't even go to an Aborigine village, I heard, without a government permission. It's all under wraps and under covers. Nobody knows what's going on over there, or they, it's just oh, like a collective numbness. Well, they, they own the land, so to actually enter their land, you've got to get a permit from them at times. And there's a whole range, you know, it's a complicated issue, so there's some Aboriginal communities that are, that are, um, functioning in a very amazing way, you know, as, as, as a group. And there's some that are really dysfunctional. And just the impact of the past of, of white um, settlement here and, and what went down, you know, in this recent past and the devastation that it's had on their culture and the amount of grief, there's so much grief there. And partly that's a numbness. We're talking about numbness. It's about, you know, to... 
to, to go deeper than that numbness to, to, to see that, you know, the, the situation and, and the pain in that, in that grief and to be able to sort of share that grief and to, and, uh, you know, it was a huge energetic phenomena I found that, that happened when the Australian government on behalf of the people said sorry to, to it, um, yeah. a few years ago. Um, and it's a huge co complex issue. And if I ever hear about Aboriginal issues, like um, going to Central Australia and um, he hearing especially the Indigenous people talk about it, it's just uh, the, the grief that I sort of share, he hearing that is just uh, immense. And to, to stay with that amount of pain, you know, all these problems sort of come up. It's like they're, they're a culture that that they're so much different from the Western culture that integration is such a, uh, it's, it's, it seems so, it's so sort of hard. And so there's a lot of um, problems there. So that's a, that's a huge one. And um, things are moving very sort of slowly there. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of promises and, and uh, a lot you of see, promises. You uh, see, uh, spiritually on an individual level, we're always saying, you know, you're suffering, so meet it. You know, meet it and feel it, right? And just let it be, let it take over, let it be there, right? And so, why can't we? We can do the same thing culturally, right? If we just let that pain out some more and let the, our whole population sure. just feel it, you know, and not and not that they have to just be remorseful for the rest of their lives, or, or sure. not Definitely. that they have to necessarily uh, uh, keep apologizing for what their fathers and grandfathers did, but somehow it has to be felt and it has to be opened up, right? And that wound, yeah. and then that part of the numbness will go down a little bit, you know, and yeah. then with less numbness, we'll naturally, just naturally be seeing who we are. We'll just, uh, you know, it'll, it won't be such a mystery. There won't be such a huge veil. And that's just my theory. I'm just throwing it up there to see if people like I that idea. When we, when we start using we, um, it's, it's, you know, you, you can talk about we with politics and, policy and um, social change um, and they can have cert certain sort of, um, you know, very powerful sort of um, impacts on our, how, how we live on all different ways and it's great that we have that. But for a, a deep sort of contentment and a, and a really, like the deepest sort of truest integrity and um, openness, it's got to come back to I. Yeah. See, I, I don't know about that because, you know, we say we is plural. So then that means a lot of individuals and separate and means separation. But in a way, if you say the, the classic say, uh, saying is I am that I am that. So that's two separations. That is not this. And uh, I is not us. So if I would rather say us is this and uh, whatever us is, you know, we're, we, we use it as a plural, but it's just everything we perceive. So it is actually a oneness, you know. I don't know if you like that or not. Sure. Well, we don't even have to say us then. It just it's it's the you know it's it's the oneness. It includes everything on on the surface of this planet and beyond. So why do we you know we don't even stop on on the planet? But obviously, when you see what's happening on the planet, there's um, you know it's sort of things move within the. You know, our survival sort of depends on a lot what sort of happens. But to, to, to move this really thick, gluey substance, it takes a bit of um, pushing and, and moving. And that thick, gluey substance being sort of, I suppose, the human collective sort of psyche. And, uh, yeah. Aruna, you've uh, helped me see who I am this morning. In uh, in many ways. Oh, you're doing a pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I love to reflect. You know, I love to just yeah. be in front of another person and. Uh... I can see that, yeah. And for me, that's these kind of conversations I very rarely have. Um, life's very simple for me. It's uh, just being with the family and just being very sort of just grounded in practical matters and, um, you know, there is a connection to sort of partly to what's going on out there and my wife's a huge uh, activist um, and she was is in, involved in 
in doing projects to help on a collective way to alleviate the, the, the suffering. And I suppose we can all, I suppose fundamentally, if we all just go back, um, if we stop the internal, if we alleviate the internal suffering and become more who we are and um, have this real deep courage and strength to, to face the, um, the arising moment to moment, um, that's, you know, it has a benefit and all has a benefit. It's, you know, we're sort of talking about something that has, you know, so maybe seems quite sort of abstract, but it has sort of deeper truths in how we respond as, as human beings. I like to say that too, because, you know, uh, at first, some years ago, I, I was even thinking I was abstract and people were thinking I was too abstract. And, and then I was even thinking that uh, every time we talk, we have to talk some concepts and then also feel some heart, you know, and I had these ideas of separate separation, but now somehow being abstract to the uh, amount to question every abstraction is, is a path is one road to, is one road to the heart and one road to just the connection, right. Or just one road to uh, the lack of distinctions uh, that everything is just accepted on an equal basis. And, uh, Somehow I, I'm kind of into that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you everyone has their sort of their role that we all um, act out. You know, and we take our, it on, take it on at every in any in one moment. Yeah, you're totally unique. There's there's no one ever like you ever before on this planet or ever will be. This moment is unique. Richard Miller, uh, whatever you're doing now, in having this dialogue is totally unique. And I'm unique, and every single moment is unique in, 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 in this arising, and nothing's any better or any worse than anything else. It's all, it's all the same. I'm no, I'm no better than anyone or anything else, and I'm no worse. But the delusion that gets cast is that there is this, this um, um, idea that there is some kind of hierarchy and it's very much mind created and on some practical levels, you know, you, you did want some distinctions. Uh, you know, you've got to have your coffee in the morning. That's no use. Not every morning, but no. I, uh, you know, I intend to move around, but things are so rich here that I seem to be like really doing well here, but I hope I can uh, make my way to Melbourne and I hope I can see you in person and uh, maybe I would love to speak to your wife too because I love activists <laughs> these days. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, she's, um, she's uh, pretty sort of um, in, into it. And, yeah. Aruna Jiri. Yeah. I thank you. Okay, thank you. And thanks to everybody watching. Thanks for following me through Australia. I think you're going to really like it. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, we're going to go for it 100 percent. And uh, and who knows? Uh, let's just talk to everyone. Or, boy, I really want to do the Aboriginal thing. I hope I can somehow get get in there and really uncover the, you know, some pain and just feel it and maybe just dump some of my numbness. And, uh, yeah, like, um, yeah, yeah, it'd be great if you um, connected there, you know, on that, yeah. Because their spirituality, you know, they have an amazing sort of um, spirituality too, that in their own sort of conceptual way, it's really deep. And to me, going, you know, you go to the cent centre of Australia, all the rural Alice Springs area, there's a, there's a real um, ancient, profound presence there that's... Uh, you know, they've been there for 40,000 years or, or whatever, at least 22,000 years is 40,000 years. I don't take any of these figures. I'm just pulling them out of the hat. But uh, there's something really, you just can't but help be that way and, and live in that, on that land out there and for it not to affect you in some deep, profound way. Um, and they definitely... Um, you know, they would have, in their way, had a, had this dialogue going, same kind of dialogue probably going on in a certain, in their own unique way that probably doesn't or 
that makes very little sense to our Western mind. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the moment I stepped off the plane, I was in some other kind of vibration that I couldn't pinpoint, but I sure could feel it. Mm. And uh, let's just say it's this continent. And uh, so again, I thank you so much, Aruna. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well